YouTube, what's the motherfucking deal, y'all? It's your boy Prince Be the Prince back at it again with a new video, baby. Yes, sir. You already know what's going on, man. Three less the gang in the building, you heard? Look, got a new hood war story reaction going crazy. The story of, and I can't believe I right? <laughs> we gonna find out some shit. Just like I'm, a, I'm. If I'm finding out some shit, y'all gonna find out some shit, okay? The story of motherfucking Shia LaBeouf, nigga. Nigga joining gang, bro. I did not know this nigga was a whole gangbanger. You finna tap in? If you like the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share the video, all that good stuff. Feedback is always greatly appreciated. Feel me? Gonna go crazy. Let's get it. Welcome to the Board Stories. In this episode, I discuss some life of Shia LaBeouf. Shia was born on June 11th, 1986, right. in Los Angeles, California. Shia grew up in poverty Young in Shia Park talking District, about. Los Angeles. During that time in the late 80s and early 90s, Echo Park was infested with violence, drugs, and gangs. Facts. Shia grew up in the CYS turf, also known as the West Side Crazies Gang, which was composed of a mix of Latino and Filipino youth in this barrio. Fun fact, I didn't even know Shia was from LA. I didn't even know that. Like, that's new shit to me. That's wild. I didn't even know that. Ambush-style gun battles erupt from slow-passing cars, and gang affiliations to find enemies and allies on the street. The West Side Crazies hung out between Echo Park and Silver Lake. Their territory ended at Glendale Boulevard. When you passed Glendale Boulevard, that was Echo Park Locos. Shire was an only child, and one of the few white families living in a predominantly Latino area. Mm. Shire recalls, it sort of made me a target, but I never felt poor because I didn't know anything else. Shai's mother was a former ballet dancer and fabric saleswoman. His father was a Vietnam War veteran who trained as a clown, but often made his living as a drug dealer. Wait, I just thought yeah. about that. I just thought about that. He said, I never felt poor because that's all he knew. I mean, you don't, you don't usually like feel like poor, poor isn't something like you feel you just are like you don't feel unless you well okay unless you like poor mentally spiritually okay i get it okay i get it but if he just talking straight up like economics type shit bro poor is poor my nigga it ain't poor being broke being poor ain't got no motherfucking feelings nigga it's either you broke or not plain and simple he also struggled with the heroin addiction, especially during Shia's childhood. The family performed together selling snow cones and hot dogs out of a cart to patrols mm. in Echo Park. Shia's childhood was chaotic due to his father's drug problem and constant lack of money. His parents split up when Shia was around five years old. Growing up, Shia took influence from the predominantly Mexican-American community he lived in. He would shave his head and wear oversized white t-shirts, resembling the local like the in his area. After being evicted from the Echo Park flat, when Shia was nine, he and his mother moved to Tahunga, which is near the San Fernando Valley. At the time, the Tahunga area was dominated by biker gangs. Shai's father was a hey, the Mongols gang. Check out if you if you ain't checked it out already, check it out my uh Mongols versus um Hell's Angels video. A couple, I think it's like a week or so back. Tap in. A year later, Shai and his father went to Malibu to go surfing. It was there where Shai decided to pick up acting. When Shai was ten. His father got a job at the Ice House, which was a bar that hosted stand-up shows. The bar let young Shia do quick stand-up routines before serving drinks. He'd use profanity to shock the audience. Shia landed an agent by going through the yellow pages and calling them one by one, pretending to be his own manager with a fake British accent. And it worked. Not because the agent believed him, but because she thought he had guts. Shia's first big break was being chosen over 2,600 other boys to star on Disney Channel's Even Stevens, hey. which he did for three years, winning the daytime Emmy in 2003. After Even Stevens was canceled in 2003, Shia landed his first movie, Hose. Hose, Dig it up on the hoes, digging. Shout out Cleo, man. Come on, man. You got Zero. You got, uh, Kush got K, man. I can't remember these two niggas' names. These two niggas was funny as shit. He was a whole bully at first, but he, he came cool. He came all right. This nigga was a funky nigga right here. I, I always... What was that? Armpit? I think his name is Armpit. Yup, Armpit. <laughs> Expected hit. 
Shire went on to star in the blockbuster Transformer movies with Megan Fox, as well as the Indiana Jones movie. In the you say Indiana followed, Jones? Shire Which one? What? I went through some highs and lows, which included a few arrests. By 2012, evidence of drug and alcohol addiction were apparent. In 2017, Shy checked into rehab. In rehab, he later revealed he was suffering from PTSD from his traumatic childhood. In 2019, in preparation for the film The Tax Collector, where Shia played a tax collector named Creeper. I who still want to watch that movie, bro. I still want to watch that shit because that shit look good. I ain't going to cap. This is one of the few movies I really want to see, especially Shia LaBeouf is in it. Not but especially, but like like a Shia LaBeouf movie? Yeah, it, that's the, this is the shit I wanted to see for sure, for sure. I need to get that shit on bootleg, no cap. Worked for a local crime lord that cuts his profits from gangs to truly portray the role. Shia took a trip back to his old stomping grounds in Echo Park. There, Shia decided to get inked with the tattoo his character would have throughout the movie. While many actors are dedicated to their craft, Shia took it to a new level. The tattoo artist Brian Ramirez publicly thanked Shia for coming back and giving to the community when he could have went anywhere else. The movie also features rapper Conejo, who plays a satanic enforcer for the Mexican cartel. Conejo is known on the street as G-Rabbit from the Harpies Gang. It was during this period, Shy began hanging out with Harpies Gang members. In a recent oh interview, Shy said he got fully jumped. My oh man throwing up the set though on oh, hood. Come on, Shy. Come on, Shy. Stop playing with it. Hold on. Stop playing with him, man. My oh, man, fro he been from the gang. He been from the gang. Stop playing. Jumped in the Harpies gang and got his put on. Shia throws up the H, which symbolizes Harpies, as well as got it tattooed on his stomach. Conejo co-signed and stamped Shia's affiliation. He said he considered Shia family. Hey, Creeper. Creeper. Hey, Creeper. Come in real quick. Say, say what's up. What's up? Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> we live. The Vario Harpies Gang is a long-standing Mexican-American gang located in the West Adams District of South Central Los Angeles. Their neighborhood stretches from Washington to Jefferson, between Hoover and Normandy. The Harpies Gang also share their barrio with the Rolling Twenty Bloods. Shy is no stranger in giving back to the community. Rewind to 2018. Shy, Bobby Soto, and Dante Johnson co-founded the Sawston Rec Theater Company, which is in the Pueblos, a low-income housing complex dominated by the Pueblo Bishop Bloods. The Slots and Rake aims to create alternative outlets for kids in the neighborhood, but everyone is welcomed. Shy's road to redemption hasn't been easy. Mm. It's been a roller coaster ride for him. After a dark period in his life, he's currently on a path to healing and personal peace. A source who knows Shy says that he's completely committed to a healthy life, to making better decisions, and taking care of his family. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, mm. comment, and subscribe. That's crazy. That's wild. I didn't even know Shaw was really about that. That's crazy. Car bro. washes are a beautiful thing. Give a fuck about that. That's wild, bro. Man, Shaw was in the Shaw was in the trenches like that. The trenches. That's crazy. But respect to him, bro. Respect to him coming back to the hood, give it back. Not a lot of motherfuckers do that shit. Especially he a white boy. He a white boy at that. He making us, he making y'all niggas look bad. He making y'all niggas look bad. You got a white boy coming back to the hood, giving back, going crazy, man. That's crazy. But that's the end of the video, man. Shia, man, I, I, my respect level is Shia has grown even more because I didn't even know he was from the city and I didn't even know he was really like that. Well, you know, I don't, I don't know, but my nigga got put on. He official. Ain't nobody calling his car. So fuck it. That's the end of the motherfucking video, man. It's your boy Prince be the Prince. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video, all that good stuff. Feedback is always greatly appreciated. You dig? Tap in next time with me, all right? Fearless gang, I'm out.